Hi guys and welcome to this week's Alakazam video blog. Hi guys, welcome to this week's Alakazam video blog. All right. Uh, I am joined as usual with Harry. All How right. are we doing with H? Good, you? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Fresh trim. Uh, yeah, yeah. This happened over the bank holiday weekend. Yeah. Did yeah. you have a good one? I did have a good one. Yeah, you? What did, yeah, not bad. What'd you get out to? Uh, eating lots of chocolate, and then going out for long walks uh, and bike rides with my son. So just to burn it off. Nice. I haven't eaten one Easter egg. I've just realised. <laughs> you got Easter eggs still to eat? I, ha I haven't eaten any. Right. Okay. Well, I think we still got some to eat actually. Okay. Yeah, we we had this really good plan that when we were taking him out to burn off the uh, the eggs that we'd eaten we would take him on an Easter egg hunt somewhere. So yeah, like well, we get Easter eggs yeah. and then go away and do an Easter egg hunt to get more Easter eggs. So no, that was our logic for the weekend. But the weather was scrundedly umptuous. Yeah, do you know what, it's been a, yeah, it's changed a little bit, but it's quite yeah. nice out there at the moment. It's not bad, it's mm. not bad. I went horse racing. I don't really like horse racing. Right. Um, but I placed two bets and won two bets, so I come out. That's good. Come out with forty quid, Bosch. Yeah, so you went uh, point to point, oh. didn't you? So sorry, I forget I say Bosch all the time. Apparently. Bosch. Yeah, oh, do you? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah we did go I point to point. Know. It's nice. It, it's, it's really nice. It's just relaxed, you know. It's cool. uh, but it was very good. I had a very good weekend. Summer's out, so always good. Excellent. Okay. Um, so uh, first off, um, a little bit of a correction on the last vlog that I did. Um, one of our customers, uh, Mill Millington, uh, sent in a review it's a very lovely review um, apart from one little thing uh, that, he, that was my fault entirely so I did um, a trick from the modern coin magic combo which I called coin through ring just to clarify there are two versions of coin through ring that are on the DVDs uh, one of which has a longer name um, and uh, whilst I was here I actually named coin through ring whereas I should have said new wave i think it is coin through handkerchief okay so uh for those of you that bought the combo or go back and watch that vlog or watching this vlog after watching that vlog uh there are two versions on there uh, so the version that i did was on disc four um i believe in the gaff coin magic section so even better than you get two versions of that you get two versions of it wow. yeah so uh but i just want to clarify that point and thank you mil for, for bringing that to me can i just show you this as well whilst i've just lent back <laughs> so uh this is obviously, as you know, my dad. Yeah. This, I believe, well, I know it was taken from Dan Ives. Yeah. Uh, Tom Rolfe, who we've got his name over there. Yeah, the uh, Rolfes. The Rolfes, yeah, because yeah. his lovely wife was in also. Um, yeah, so he got this T-shirt, because he came all over from Canada yeah. to do a fluffy bunny challenge. He did. And obviously see us, because we're... They're like a Canadian family. Yeah. Well. So yeah. Uh, we saw them. So thank you so much as well for the t-shirt. They got Dad a mug. Um, and basically, they got you also. What did they get you? I, I got a book. You got I a got book. a book. Hey, look at his face. <laughs> what? I, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it was it was really, really lovely and yeah. totally unexpected. Uh, unexpected. And Tom actually, you know, he said to me, he said, out of everybody I brought a present for, because we all got presents, um, everybody I brought a present for, you were the most difficult to, to buy for because I wanted to buy you a book, but I didn't know what books you had or, or anything. Um, but he managed it. He managed to buy me a book that I don't own. So I was I was very chuffed. Nice. Yeah, um, it was very it was very nice of him. You, obviously, you didn't have to do that, but uh, we very very highly appreciate it because it does mean a lot. Yeah, thank you, Tom. That is um, that was a lovely gesture and uh, very much appreciated. So today, yep, um, it's going to be a short one today. It is uh, because we've got a few products just to talk about. Um, I think we should talk about common sense first. Okay. Yeah. Have you so, got any? Yeah, cool. Uh, well, it's just a joke. Yeah, it's just a joke. Got my some sister, actually, sense. my sister hasn't got any common sense. Can I quickly, <gasps> can I quickly do a story, really quick? Yeah, go on then. So we was at a family barbecue thing on the Sunday. Um, the Sunday they just went. Yeah. And we done musical chairs, and obviously all the adults joined in just for a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, and ended up being a massive fight. No, no. We, we were just like putting the chairs away, obviously, like you do. Um, and then my mum comes second, and she got as a little prize some bubbles. Right. And mum was like, "Oh, Willow will love them." Which is my cat, yeah. and Holly then went. Do you think she'll be able to blow them? Right. So that is just stupid. Right. Obviously, we mean we'll blow them and she'll pop them. Yeah. 
You didn't try it out then. Didn't give it. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that would, that she might have be for a wicked YouTube yeah. clip. Oh, no, honestly though, um, she is a bit silly. Mm, yeah. But the common sense that we're talking about is this little beauty. Yeah. Also by Nardi. Also by Nardi. A Pishnid Nardi. So this was uh, this was one of the first tricks that your dad released. Actually, mm. um, it's been uh, been out for quite a few years. At, but. In that time, its impact has not diminished. We're still getting people that are buying these and still raving about it because it is a perfect trick to carry around in your wallet. It is a perfect trick to carry around in your wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also one of the ones where, um, not obviously you don't have to do it like this, but it's a nice one where um, it's, you can do a bit of flirting if you wanted to do a bit of flirting. Mm. If you're a single person, yeah, then it's a nice way to get, get in the mix up. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, but it's very nice, it breaks the ice, um, and like you said, it is powerful, and for a group of people as well, it does get everyone involved, and you'll see why in a second. Excellent, so you're going to perform this for me, yeah? I will perform it on you, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at Common Sense as perform performed by Harry. Right, Andy. Yes, Harry. This is, uh, I'm going to show you something that I'm okay. going to show to females. Right, okay. Okay. Um, you will do now because you've got such a smooth face. Look at that face. Oh. Oh. Right, so uh, I want you to pretend to be a lady. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and basically, it's to do with perfumes. Now, as you may be aware, I am very into aftershaves. Um, yeah. I like talking about them and I like the smell, how it develops, right? Now, I've actually got some of these. These are kind of scent cards as such. So, we've got some perfumes for your lovely lady self. We've got. Yeah. Jean Paul, uh, Truth, Eternity, yeah. Poison, Anaya Name, Beautiful, and Opium. Okay. All right. Now, in a moment, I'm just going to get you to select anyone, okay? But we'll give them a little mix up first. Now, do you like perfumes? Do you love them? Yeah. Nice yeah. little. I mean, admit, when someone walks past and they smell nice, you do. Oh, yeah, you immediately sort of like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. nice. Right. Yeah. So, uh, just reach in and just take out anyone. Yeah. You, you took it out? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Uh, can you now just rub that on your wrist for me, but don't let me see it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and now can I turn back around so the card's out of sight? Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so if I turn around, I won't see it, sorry, just no. to clarify. Beautiful. Now, what uh, wrist did you wipe it on? This one. This one, okay. Go on. Come in, sorry. I think, I think that is one of my favourites. Is that Jean, is that Jean Paul? Yes. It is Jean Paul, it beautiful. Um, so yeah, uh, that's just me kind of training training my nose, but I'll tell you what, we'll do it one more time. All right? Okay. Just reach in, just take out anyone. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, once again, rub it on the other wrist this time, so I don't want mixed scents, please. Now, put it away outside. Yeah. you done it? Beautiful. Yep. Uh, just to clarify, it was a different fragrance. It yeah? was, yeah. Right. Uh, come in, yeah. So it was this wrist this time. Yeah, that's different. I think that's more fruity. Base notes. Was that an A and A? Yes, it, it was, was beautiful. It was um, yeah, so that is common sense. Thank you very much, H. Thank you. That was common sense. Yeah, and it's a brilliant trick to carry around in your pocket. It is and, brilliant. Uh, very, very easy to do. Um, don't underestimate no. uh, how powerful this trick is. Honestly, because uh, you know I've worked with people that have used this trick. Yep. And it always comes across really good. Um, it's a great opener. It's a great strolling item. You literally do it, put it away. Two, three, you know. four, five, six, seven cards. Seven cards. Uh, normal size, so or a little bit smaller than normal size. Yeah, no, they're, they're uh, yeah, it's about poker yeah. size. Poker size. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't take up a lot of pocket room. The uh, they are written instructions, but they're so easy to to kind of understand. Mm -hmm. uh, there, to be honest with you, I thought there was memory work, but there isn't really. No, it kind of. You learn, obviously you learn the method. Um, so once you kind of read and go through the method, then it's just sparks in your head. You don't have to remember yeah. anything hard. Also, um, I mentioned before the uh, performance that it's good to do with a group of people because a lot of the time you do get people going, oh, let me... Yeah, you know and mean? then you they can't get, smell it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, which is good. But yeah, it's one of those ones where if you're ever at a gig and obviously it depends on your age, but I do some and if, there, if there's old people about or old elderly people about, um, the old ladies normally do like go, like if I'm just doing this and they always go, oh, do you know what I mean? It's just a nice way just to get in there. And then obviously um, it's an easy one to carry around with you. Instant reset, uh, different out every time, providing they don't put the same card. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very good. And also, not that they would, but the fact there's blank backs, they've got nothing to go by. There's no, do you know what I mean? They can't really think of looking at anything. 
Yeah, fair enough. So Beautiful. Common Sense is currently in stock. Uh, these are about ten ninety nine, I believe. Yeah, um, not much at all. No, and uh, seriously, it's something that you can carry mm. around in your pocket, uh, take out at a moment's notice, perform, uh, and people, I guarantee, will be talking about it. 100%, 100%. Also, um, I will be carrying this out and most probably doing it in uh, Covent Garden soon so you'll actually see some live reactions uh, from some girls. Brilliant. So, so that is common sense. Right. Harry, yep. uh, I think we should talk about the competition. Yes. So last week, uh, I asked the question, uh, which famous um, magician, uh, I, I may have said stage minute player, uh, which famous magician was born in Mumbles in Wales? Um, and we were getting, uh, we got lots of correct answers. Uh, some went a little bit more in depth. They were telling me about the fact that uh, he was in the war um, and what his stage name was, what his real name was, um, and all sorts of other information. So thank you for that. It's always good to hear that, that sort of thing. Um, but the answer we were looking for uh, was Cardini nice. uh, or Richard Valentine Pitchford, if you gave that as well, but Cardini mainly, because um, not a lot of people know uh, his, his actual real name. Uh, the winner uh, was Chris Davies, so congratulations to Chris. Uh, Chris, Chris. Um, if you could send in your uh, address, uh, just send it to sales at alakazam.co.uk and what we'll do is we'll get a, a deck of Academy Elites uh, sent out in the post to you. Lovely, which are the best cards ever. Which are the best cards ever. So what is the competition we're going to set? For? So the competition this week, I think, um, is um, we've been talking about a lot about names um, and various other things. So um, which magician um, ha had the profession as a computer programmer? Uh, he's a famous magician. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's famous for a particular slight that I'm sure everybody uses. Uh, so it's which famous magician uh, was a computer programmer? I'm just going to throw this, obviously don't tell it if it's going to give the whole thing away, but where would you find answers to questions like the ones you've just put out there? Ah, right, okay. What are the best kind of resources? Uh, so uh, lots of people would probably do internet searches. Right. Um, I'm fairly certain that if you were to type in computer programmer, magician, that right. the answer would probably come up somewhere. So just something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, uh, that's all the answer that we're looking for is which magician uh, was a computer programmer. Um, if you send in your answer to sales at alakazam.co.uk, uh, as per usual, we'll pick them out and uh, you'll get a chance to win a deck of Academy Elites, which are best cards ever. ever. There we Lovely. Go. So. Right. Uh, I see you've got a little stack. I have got a little stack. So, um, I uh, first and foremost, let me just say this. I do very, very little in the way of mentalism. I, I've mentioned this before. Um, and what mentalism I do do tends to be the same things. Okay. Yeah? Uh, there's a little bit I do when I do stand-up stuff, and there's a little bit, uh, certainly, that I do when I do uh, close-up. I use things like The Assassin. Um, yeah. I do Hollywood or Bush from there. Um, and a couple of stand-up wow. routines that I, I do really as well. One. Yeah. Um, but um, as a rule, I don't perform a lot of mentalism. And certainly, it wouldn't be the, the kind of branch of magic that I would pick books out of or, or DVDs out of. Sorry, why is that as a rule? Is that just that you've made yourself? Well, the, this, is the, this is the thing. So uh, I think that where, certainly when I first started my book collection my focus was uh, because I like card magic because I like close-up magic because I like um, some aspects of stage and parlor mm -hmm. magic they were the kind of um, books that yeah. I was collecting yeah so and I didn't really have an interest in mentalism okay. uh, obviously I see or I have seen a lot of mentalism from uh, various people over the years notably your dad uh, notably Mark Spellman notably uh, people like Mark Paul because of their involvement with the company. Mm. So um, I've always, uh, it, that's kind of been there, but not my main focus. So in the time that I have been in magic, I have realized um, that it's, it's a little bit, not unfair is the wrong word, it's a little bit remiss of me to not look at mentalism mm. books just because they happen to be on mentalism. Because I'm certainly of the opinion now that mentalism books and DVDs uh, can offer insights to anybody that's into to yeah. magic. 
because I think that mentalism, certainly where we are now, is a branch of magic that um, because of what it is and what it does and the various techniques that are involved can, can offer people that do close-up work, people that do stage work, people that do illusions, kids magic, still things that they can take away and use yeah. using those sort of branches. And that's where this comes in. So I, um, I took a, <laughs> so I, me saying about the books that I've had before, I had things like Practical Mental Magic and I had things like 13 Steps, um, or sorry, have, um, but they were kind of there mm. because they, they, they were books that I collected as part of maybe sets that I'd picked up yep. somewhere. A um, little while back, uh, we had a customer come in and he had some books that he wanted us to, books and DVDs that he wanted us to sell at our club. Yeah, and then um, because he, he wasn't able to sell them. In there uh, were a couple of um, were books certainly that I had and some books that um, I, I thought, well, actually, perhaps I should give these a go. Mm. Um, one of which was Life, Death and Other Card Tricks, which is a brilliant book, um, which you can't get anymore, unfortunately, but if you can get a hold of a copy, then buy it. Uh, and this, uh, Psychological Subtleties 1 by Banachek. So um, on the back of me buying this, mm -hmm. I then had a bit of a splurge on different things. Um, I brought a copy of Pure Effect, I brought a copy of um, Absolute Magic and a couple of other more mentalism related because things. Because you needed more books. Because I needed more <laughs> books. Um, but also because, and this kind of led the way with it, I realised that exactly what I just said there, that with these books, they're, they're all right for a mentalist, a mentalist. Certainly, these would be invaluable. The information in here would be invaluable. But quite apart from that, the techniques that are in here and the kind of approaches mm. to what is being discussed, I think I could certainly use in some of the things that I do close up, stage and parlour wise. Yeah. And that, and that I think is a is an interesting thing. It's the kind of the crossover. It's very easy. We're we're both into close up magic. I think it's fairly safe to say. Um, it's very easy for us to always look at close-up magic and mentalism more in your case mm. um, and not look at other things that that actually might be worth considering. Um, I know of lots of close-up magicians uh, and, and stage magicians and parlour magicians that, for instance, have brought um, David Kay's book, um, Seriously Silly, because there are some, th some things in there that they've adapted mm. to use in their particular branch of magic. And that's the, the same is true with this. Psychological subtleties, there is no doubt, is a brilliant book for mentalists. But please, if you do close-up magic or other magic, don't rule out the fact that in these other books that are maybe on subjects you, you, you're not particularly interested in or not particularly uh, au fait with, there might be things in there mm. that you just look at and you think, yeah. <gasps> Wow, that won't that's necessarily brilliant. be in books that are related. Yeah, that's to that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I've already picked things out of here that now um, I, I'm incorporating into some of the stuff that I do. Uh, magic and the very few mentalism mm. things that I do, uh, magic orientated that, that are kind of raising them up a little bit. Yeah, little psychological um, subtleties as per the book's uh, title. Um, that that really they they take something that. You know, I'm hoping he's already good, and then go. Yeah. Well, now it's even better, and who knows? I might get further along in the book, and that thing will now go again. Yeah. You know, and that I think is the the strength of it. Um, I'm only uh, I've only got uh, psychological subtleties one um, because um, there's part of me that even though I think this is an amazing book, there's part of me that's thinking don't buy any of the other volumes just for the time being. Because you want to know that this is, that you're really getting the full amount out of this. Yeah. I'm sure I will because I love books, um, and I hate having one of anything and not yeah. the others in the set. Um, but just so you know, uh, there are other works. There are three. Uh, sorry, there are three in the uh, set. There's um, psychological subtleties three. There's psychological subtleties two. And uh, Steve Shaw also uh, sorry Banachek, uh also had something called pre thoughts. And this, which is uh, psychophysiological thought reading, um, which is, um, I'm told, a very, very good book. Uh, so check them out. Uh, if you do mentalism already and you don't own these, why not? Why? Uh, yeah. Uh, and if you do close-up magic and you think, oh, do you know, maybe there's some other things I should be looking at or I want to get more into mentalism, 
then check these out mm. because they seriously I think that you're gonna you're gonna love them. I think a lot of the time, obviously, um, you'll know this from watching people like um, just watching people perform. Obviously, you'll get tips and stuff like that. But um, another thing I think about with mentalism stuff is from the DVDs and uh, the books is that you learn. I feel how to build and kind of lower tension and stuff. I feel like. Mentally, in my opinion, I think mentalism is more a lot more about a performance. I know, I know everything is, but I feel like with yeah. mentalism, it's about the way it's delivered. And I think um, watching like people like Dad and Mark Spellman um, and Mark Paul and people like that, um, a lot of the time, and even Jamie Dawes, to be honest with you, I get yeah. a lot of tips from him. Um, the way they deliver them, and even just watching them perform, you think, wow, even if it's just a split second longer pause or something like that, yeah. it changes everything. And I think that's where mentalism. Um, is very clever and I do think you should kind of look into that even if you don't perform any mentalism tricks just look at the performances of mentalists I think yeah. you will get a lot out of it yeah yeah uh, and uh, I'm, t I'm tending to agree I mean the, the thing is is that um, we've uh, it's, it's very hard to define why why that is in yeah. a lot of instances because there's obviously lots of great magicians out there there's lots of great mentalists mm. um, but I I, I I totally understand where you're coming from. I think that uh, with magic, a lot of the time, uh, with very few exceptions, um, with magic, it, it, you know, we know that there's not real magic, and so there's, there's an immediate block. Mm. With a lot of mentalism, we don't know that that these things are still impossible. Um, you know, we, we're still very much, I, I feel, in a culture where people are quite welcome, quite willing to believe in uh, mediums, they're quite willing to go and see a clairvoyant. Yep. They're quite willing to have their fortune told. And so, because we still have that, um, even though we still know it's impossible, there's yeah. still part of us that's yeah. will, uh, wishing and, and acute that it belief. was. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of like we know it can't be possibly true, possibly be true, but there's part of us deep down inside that wants it to be. Yeah. You know, whereas with magic. You know, making a card come to the top of the deck, you know, may be a great trick and performed extremely well, but you, I, I don't think there'll be anybody really that could, re, any lay audience that could really look at that and go, well, it's just a card going to the top of the pack. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I totally get what you mean. And that's why it's worth just checking out these books. It's worth having a look through these books because you might do something like the Ambitious Card and you get really good reactions to, from it. But these may then make it something where yeah. they go, oh, mm. wow. I do. You know? Yeah, don't get me wrong. Obviously, we're not saying magic is no. no, no we're not, not saying at that at all. Ambitious card is a great trick. Magicians, there's so many great magicians out there. It's unreal. And magic is phenomenal. But I do just think, and obviously, I'm not saying mentalism is better than it, or no. magic is better than mentalism, or whatever. But I'm just saying, I do think there is a slight difference in the approach that mentalists and magicians take. And I do think it's worth checking out, like I said earlier, um, watching a few mentalists um, and a few mind readers and just seeing how they deliver their body language, yeah, um, yeah, pauses, stuff like that, words used, because a lot of the time it is... Um, I think, I, I, I think what, you're, what you're alluding to is that in a lot of instances, um, certainly, and again with very few exceptions, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, with um, not, not splitting the, the two up, but mentalism, because of the, what it is, and it is the, the last great unknown, you know, I'm yeah. reading your mind, it's the last great unknown thing. And because of that, it kind of has a little bit more of a dramatic flair mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Um, and it, it tends to be um, that people that, that, that kind of are more into mentalism, uh, the, the theatric tends to be a little bit yeah. more there. Um, and that, that, you know, they there is that with with magic as well. Yeah. I guess you know the whole thing that this has done for me and enlightened for me is that I shouldn't just you know I shouldn't. I'm into close up magic and card magic and coin magic and all those sorts of things. Love it, but shouldn't necessarily just always look at, at those because I can certainly tell you that I've got loads out of this in the time mm. that I've been reading it. Uh, the same is true with um, absolute magic. Uh, I got that um, and. Um, uh, and even I was in the middle of reading this at the point. At uh, that point, I put absolute magic. I put this down and started reading mm -hmm. absolute magic. I read it from cover to cover in the space of a couple of days. It's not a thick book anyway, 
But the point is, is that I was so engrossed by what I was being told. There was part of me, it's like a, a light bulb moment mm. that just kind of went, oh, right. Mm. Oh, do you know what? That might be the thing that you need to then, you know, make, as John Grastafaro puts it, the one degree change. And I think, you know, the point I'm making is that these books are not only wonderful for what they are, but they may be inspirational for things that you you think, mm. what can I do to make my magic that one degree better? Um, and if you can do that and you look and stuff, then that's the joy in, in books and DVDs and videos and talking yeah. to other magicians. Definitely. Um, so, yeah. Um, they're psychological subtleties. Uh, there are a couple of different... Pi- oh, and psychophysiological thought reading. Mm. Uh, do you know how long it took me to learn how to say that properly? How it's, even, it's even harder to type. Probably longer around. than it took you to read that book you just Ooh, Yeah, I think it probably did. Um, these are all still available uh, as we speak. Um, check them out. I don't think you'd be disappointed. Um, and, uh, yeah, mm. well worth taking a look at. Yeah. Also, sorry, last thing. Yeah. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Um, do you get how do you kind of um, where is it that you find stuff that will improve your magic obviously not just learning a wider range of stuff Mm -hmm. but how where do you get tips or inspiration from to improve the tricks you already learn I think yeah Um, I think that's a great question pop that in with your competition entries because that would just be interesting whether it is reading other topics or other branches of magic to help you out in the section you're in if you know what I mean yeah Um, so like yeah like what in my opinion um, doing a card trick, then watching some um, mentalists and stuff like that, and then adding more drama, per se, to my um, performance. But that's what I would do. So I just want to see what you guys would do as well. Brilliant. Okay. Um, check them out on the site now. Lovely. That brings us to the end of this week's Is vlog. indeed. That was a very, um, very in-depth yeah. vlog today. Um, short, I think, but quite in-depth mm. uh, in what we got covered. Um, so check out Psychological Subtleties. Uh, they're on our site now, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, as well as Psychophysiological Thought Reading. Um, and Common Sense, which is also just there. Yep. Um, Remember, uh, the Alakazam uh, competition is on this vlog, uh, so please send in your entries to sales at alakazam.co.uk. We'll pick out a winner and we'll get a deck of Academy Elites out in the post to you. Yep. Uh, have you got anything left to say? I just want to say, I just want to clarify that I was not saying mind reading or whatever is better than magic. <laughs> I just want to clarify that. Uh, obviously, we love magic. Um, sometimes the way I say things doesn't actually sound right. No, I, th- I think hopefully you understand what, you what I was saying. Yeah, I think people will know what you meant, and uh, yeah, got lots of good thought mm. for thought. So Love well it. done, H. Um, with that said, um, we hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, you're away, so have a good time away. Go in Copenhagen in about eight hours, twelve hours maybe. All right, sure. Um, enjoy your holiday. Thank you. Uh, so, guys, uh, me and Harry will see you next week on the Alakazam video blog. <laughs>